Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 67. It's on the vector properties of angular quantities, which may be the longest title in this whole series, but it gets at rotating systems like a gyroscope. And to really understand how a gyroscope does its magic, you have to understand what are the properties of this rotating system and how do they act as vectors in different directions. And so it's confusing when you look at rotating systems. And so a good analogy that I came up with was to think about the North star. So if you go out at night, you can always find Polaris, and Polaris is always going to be pointed to the north. Now, why do we use the north star? Because all the other stars are going to move in the night sky. If you were to shoot them with time lapse, it would look like this with the north star right in the middle. Now, those stars aren't moving. It's the Earth that's spinning. But since the north star is pointed right where the Earth's axis is, then it's not going to appear to rotate. And in a rotating system, when we're looking at angular quantities, all the parts of that rotating system are going to be moving. The only thing that's not going to move is going to be that axis in the center. And so we can use that axis in the center to figure out the vector forces or accelerations of all of these objects using the right hand rule. And so if you have a rotating system like this, a rotating, this one's rotating counterclockwise, there are going to be a number of different properties. And so one could be a torque. Maybe a torque was applied or a force was applied to that rotating system. Maybe that increased its angular velocity. And as we get an increase in angular velocity, we've got angular acceleration. And now since this thing is moving, it has motion, it also has rotational inertia, and so it's going to have angular momentum. All four of these are going to be vectors. And it's very simple to figure out in which direction that they're, they're pointing, and that's using the right-hand rule. And so if we have a rotating system that's rotating like that, all you do is use your right hand, and I'm going to move my fingers in the direction of the rotation, and my thumb is going to point right out at me. And so all of these are going to be vectors that point in the direction of right out the screen. Let's say it was rotating the other direction, then you use your right-hand rule again, and you move it upside down, and now it's going to be pointing away from you. And so if there's no rotation in a gyroscope, what's going to happen to it when I let it go? Well, it's simply going to fall over. Now, is that a rotating system? It is. The bottom is stationary, and so we have a torque or a force being applied to it, and that's the force due to gravity. But it's not going to stand up. And so if we get a gyroscope spinning, so I applied a force to it, I applied a torque to it, and we have rotation in that direction, we can start to figure out where was that torque exerted down. Where is the uh, increase in angular momentum? It's going to be down as well. And so now it has momentum, angular momentum, and that's going to resist this torque due to gravity. And so if I just let it spin, it can even balance on top of this cup because we've got momentum in that vertical direction. It's resisting changes in either direction. Now what happens as it slows down? Eventually it's going to slow down and that force of gravity is going to pull it off the cup. And so let's look at those properties again in review. What is a torque? A torque is we're applying a force that's perpendicular to the radius. In other words, a point from the center of that axis. And so if we figure out where that torque is, so it's got a force that's perpendicular to this spinning disk, all I do is use my right hand rule again. I'm going to put my fingers in the direction of the force. Where is the torque going to be acting? It's going to be acting straight up. Or in other words, there's going to be a force in that direction. Let's look at angular velocity. That's going to be the rate of spin of this disk. Let's say it's fixed at this point. And so let's say it's spinning in this direction. Where's going to be the angular velocity? What's the vector for that? Again, all the points of the disk are moving everywhere, but where's going to be the direction of that angular velocity? Again, using your right hand rule, it's going to be pointed straight up. Let's say we start to increase that angular velocity. Now we're getting angular acceleration. Which direction is that going to be? It's going to be pointed up as well. And now let's look at angular momentum. And this is kind of a thought experiment. Imagine if we had a big disk that was kind of frictionless and you were to start to walk on it. So you're going to start to move in that direction. Well, you are a point object, you're moving in that direction, and you're going to start to have angular momentum. Where's the angular momentum going to be? Again, using your right hand rule, it's going to be pointed up. Now, using Newton's third law, you're going to apply a force into that disk. It's going to apply a force back onto you. And so that disk is going to move in the other direction. And so if I move my hand in that direction, where is going to be the angular momentum of the disk itself? It's going to be in the opposite direction. And since it started with no angular momentum, the sum of those angular momentums is going to be 
equal to each other. I'm going to move in one direction, the disk is going to move in the opposite direction. And so this helps us explain how a gyroscope works. And so if we start a gyroscope spinning, let's say it's spinning in this direction, where's the torque? It's going to be towards the center or where that string is. Um, where is the angular momentum going to be? It's going to be in that direction as well. And so it's going to have a certain amount of angular momentum in that direction. So let me start that gyroscope spinning. And so you can see it's resisted, resisting changes um, due to gravity. But why is it starting to process? Why is it starting to turn like that? Well, there's another rotating system here as well. There's going to be the force of gravity down, and that's going to be perpendicular to that radius coming from the center of axis. And so now I'm going to use my right hand there. I'm going to point my fingers down where that force due to gravity is. And now where is the torque now? It's pointed out towards me. And so where's going to be the increase in the angular momentum going to be? It's going to be towards me as well. And so we can add those two vectors and we can figure out what's the sum vector of the gyroscope itself. And that's going to be pointed towards us and that's why this is going to process like that. It's just going to keep moving like that. Now what's going to happen as it keeps spinning and spinning and spinning? It's going to start to lose some of that angular momentum and as it does that the force of gravity is going to apply a greater torque and it'll eventually fall down. And so in the physics classroom you can do inquiry with this. You could start with a gyroscope or a better way to do this is use something larger that has a lot of mass or rotational inertia like a bicycle wheel and you can spin it and then you can hold your finger on one side and you can start to feel that force or that turning force or you can just get a uh, gyroscope of your own. You just apply a torque to it. It's going to spin. Uh, these things work really good unless uh, it gets out of control and it falls off the table like that. And so again, could you use a representation to study all the forces at acting on a rotating system? And then finally, could you collect data on the torque, angular velocity, angular acceleration, and momentum? I hope so, and I hope this was helpful.